All right, here we go. This is going to be it right here. Equations of circles. The Today, you will generate equations of circles, and we will do this using different types of information that are given. And we will also um, do this just mainly because I wanted to make sure you all saw this for like different classes that you might see later, especially pre-calculus. I do remember doing this quite a bit with pre-calculus. Anyways, so here you go. Let's get this started. How can we begin this? Usually when I see this uh, equation of circles, I'm not presented with this formula this way, which is actually kind of neat and better, because usually they like to start in the origin and work from there, and then eventually build in the center. Here, we're going to go ahead and start you with the center and kind of work it from there, um, which I think is fascinating. Anyways, <clears throat> so what is the equation of the circle? The standard form of this is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h and k are the center and r is the radius. So always keep in mind what it equals will be the radius and the two numbers in the parentheses with the x and y will become the center points or the points for the center. Now also keep in mind that like if you see something like um, say here x minus 3 squared that's going to mean like positive 3. Okay. Um, so, and you'll see that with these examples. So I just want to, you know, just kind of think opposite. Whatever you see in the parentheses, think opposite. Okay? So, if we have this here as center, uh, one th or 5, 3, with a radius 2, I can go, all right, x. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and put here, put x minus squared, because I'm doing it from this with the center. Going backwards, I'll show you what I mean by going backwards at the end. Y minus squared equals, all right, so here all I got to do is put, okay, 5, 3, and then say 2 squared, so I'm going to square the 2 to get 4, and that's it. That's all you got to do. So if you go by it like this, X minus squared plus Y minus, and notice how I'm leaving this spot blank then I could say, okay, that's going to be negative 1, that's going to be positive, minus 7, and then 14 squared is 196. Always remember, you got to square that um, radius. Now, pay attention, notice on number 3, I'm trying to go through these examples kind of quick, but number 3, that's a rate, the diameter. So a radius, we got to divide that by 2 before you square anything. Radius would be 9, which we will square. So you want to make sure you do that. And again, x minus squared plus y minus squared <clears throat> equals, and then again, let's see here, you would have negative 2, which would become positive. You'd have negative 11, which would become positive. And then you would say 9 squared is 81. And there you go. So you can kind of see and kind of go from there. Now, what happens when you do, let's say, something like this. I'm going to, uh, I didn't mean to do it like that. The radius here is 16 because I'm going to divide this by 2. Um, what happens if you have a 0? Okay, so let me show you this one here on another slide. But you can keep following it here. I'm still doing number four, but I would do like this. Like if I if I said this, and you'll see the shortcut to this in a second. I just want to make sure you see this whole thing. Y minus squared equals. Okay, so if I put in zero here, y minus zero, and put in nine here, and then say sixteen squared is two hundred and fifty-six. Remember that's sixteen squared. I don't really need that x minus zero. I can just leave that as x squared plus y minus nine squared equals 256. Okay, so you can kind of see when you see that like something like that, then you know that the that point had a zero. Okay? So kind of go with that. So anytime we have a zero, we can just say x squared or y squared if we don't have to say x minus zero squared or anything like that. So going back, last example on this one. Uh okay, so on I'm not gonna do number six, but I'll do number five. Here I would say x minus, actually that's going to become plus 4 squared, plus, since that's a 0 there, I'm just going to say y squared. I don't have to put y minus 0 squared, 
And then when you square this, that gets rid of the square root, leaving you 47. So you can kind of see there how those would work. Okay, so now let's look at number seven. How do I get it from a graph? Okay, from a graph, what I do is I find the center first, which in this case is three, negative two. And then I count, like, if you go, say, straight up, straight across, either way, or straight down, you'll figure out how much is the radius. In this case, one, two, three, four, five. You can see here, go to the side, one, two, three, four, five. So you can see here, the radius is five. Okay, so if you do that, then you can come up and say x minus squared plus y minus squared equals 25. That's the radius squared. And then I could say here 3, negative 2, which become positive 2. So x minus 3 plus y minus 2, and those are squared, is equal to 25. Don't forget the little squares on the top with the thing. Okay, dokie. Now comes the slightly longer part. Now, this probably would have been good for, like, if you're in CP. But, hey, those of you that are in the CP classes also might want to make sure, in case you're taking pre-cal, which I hope you do, you'll understand how to do this next part. Okay, so, here they give you the center and a point on the circle. Not necessarily the uh, point that has to be... Um, vertically or horizontally across. So that means you have to do something else. So we have to find the distance because that would represent the radius. So we got to find the distance. So how do I do that? Well, first I need more space. All right, so let's look at this. If you go back to the distance formula, which said the square root of subtract your x's plus subtract your y's, that would give you the radius. So my x coordinates are 9 and 7, if you look back at your number 8, and my y coordinates are 10 and 4. If I type that into the calculator, and again, you could type all of that in right there all at once into the calculator, and you should get something like, well, Something like uh, 6.32. I'm going to hold up, erase this re here real quick. So I get something like about 6.32. Okay, but if you want to be more accurate, just do this part. The 9 minus 7 squared plus the 10 minus 4 squared. And what you would do is you would get that answer would go under a square root symbol, which in this case would be 40. Because the reason why you would do that is if you know this is 40, then you could easily go back and say, all right, uh, let me go over here back to the problem. If this is the radius is the square root of 40, and I've got a center of 9, 10, I can say x minus 9 squared plus y minus 10 squared. Oops, there we go. Equals square this 40. And there you go. So you can kind of see how that works. It's not really too difficult should be fairly easy, right? Okay, so if I did the same thing here for the radius, uh, it says square root, parentheses, x minus plus y minus, remember the y's are in the second one, the x's are in the first one, so 1 and negative 7, negative 5, negative 13. Okay, that's what I would type not with the square root symbol, just leave the square root symbol there. Which would give me a square root of 128. I'm not going to actually take the square root of it because then I can go, all right, I've got that. Then I the equation of the circle, I have no idea why I was writing y first, x minus squared plus y minus squared equals, if I square this right here, it just gets rid of the square root symbol. So that's why that would I wouldn't really worry about that. And then for my center, I would put here 1, negative 5, which becomes positive, and there you go. Fairly simple, right? Not too bad. I know. It's easy. Okay, so how can I make this a little bit more difficult? What about if I gave you, say, the circumference or the diameter, or I'm sorry, the area? 
keep in mind that like circumference is equal to two uh actually we'll say diameter times pi or two r pi and i'm going to say two rate times the radius so in other words get rid of this this is your diameter so that means if i divide by two my radius is three so my equation of my circle is x minus squared plus y minus squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. So let's see here. Negative 1, 4, and there you go. Okay, so that's all that is. Now, area is equal to pi r squared, correct? So that means the number that has the pi, or next to the pi, if I take the square root of that, that would be the radius. So this right here is the radius squared, which is 16. Get rid of the pi. Take the square root, and you get the radius is 4. So that means here that this is x squared plus y oops, minus squared equals 4 squared, which is 16. And then I would have here negative 8, which becomes positive, negative 11, which becomes positive, and there you go. Fairly easy to get, and if you do have questions, again, always feel free to ask. Getting there, this is it. So now, let's go backwards. This also is, actually, where a lot of times they, they start you off as backwards, and then you go, and from that, uh, it, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. To me, it's kind of interesting. Because usually, when we start teaching this, or I used to remember when I would first start teaching this, I would start with the formula and kind of make y'all work backwards. Find the center, find the radius. Here, we started the other way. Gave you the center and radius and helped you build the equation. So, does that make it more simple? I don't know. Let's find out. We shall see. All right. So, now, here's what I got to remember. If you're going backwards, keep in mind, these two numbers are going to be your center. But think opposite. So, if you see minus 5 and minus 1, that would become positive 5 positive 1. The radius, remember, take the square root of this number right here. So square root of 64 is 8. There you go. Got the radius and you got the center. Uh, all right. Remember, if I don't see a, a number with the x or the y, what number do you put? <gasps> yes, you put 0. And then, again, think opposite. That's a positive 10, so it becomes a negative 10 and oh no how do I take a square root of decimal just take the square root you'll be fine it comes out to 6.5 it's not that bad see you can get those uh, oh but this says diameter oh I gotta pay attention oh that's the radius is 6.5 so that means the diameter is 13 I wouldn't be that tricky guys don't worry but you do see gotta make sure pay attention all right, so that's pretty much it, guys. The challenge one, eh, let's see if some of y'all can come up with that. But you've got this. You've got everything that you need there, right there. Uh, let's kind of go from there and see what y'all can do. So here is the assignment. Okay, so again, so what you need to make sure is you're doing these problems for the CP. You're doing 1 through 10 on pages 3 and 4. 1 through 10, 13, 15, 17, 18. For pre-AP, you're doing 3 through 4 all. And again, don't forget, you need the notes and the problems to turn in, so you can't just turn in one or the other. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for y'all's time. Y'all take care, be safe, and I will, you know, hopefully we'll get... Hopefully everything will be just fine. I know, I got a little tongue-tied there. Y'all take care. Thank you so much for everything.